Super Mario Brothers were king shit in the mid to late 80s. The first three Super Mario games on NES were perennial favorites and still hold up wonderfully to this day. But Mario goes beyond just video games. I mean, everyone and their grandmother knew who Mario was as the 90s approached, and this was during a time when the video game industry itself was still looked at as a novelty act mainly for kids. I mean, it still kinda does have a stigma attached to it, but this was well before there were legitimate fucking sporting events based on gaming. Basically, Mario transcended the games themselves. He wasn't just the mascot for Nintendo or video games as a whole, he was a pop culture phenomenon. So as the turn of the decade approached, and the 16-bit era kicked off, we of course needed an update in the Mario franchise, and Super Mario World was the answer to that calling. It's a natural continuation of its predecessors. You play as Mario or Luigi in a side-scrolling platformer, stomping out enemies and grabbing power-ups as you journey through seven worlds to save Princess Toadstool. And yes, she's still referred to as Toadstool in the game, so that's what I'm gonna call her. Like I said, the gameplay resembles the previous entries in the series, but of course this isn't a carbon copy of the games gone by either. Aside from the obvious and necessary graphical improvements on the new console, we also get the introduction of Yoshi, a character who would go on to an iconic status all his own. Now and again, you'll find a Yoshi egg in a block, and you'll be able to ride him and gobble up some enemies, as well as take an extra hit point before he runs off, although you can get back on him if you catch him. He not only eats enemies, but he can also utilize some as weapons. He'll spit out the green Koopa shells like the way you kick them when you're Mario, spit fireballs if he eats the red shells, can fly temporarily if he eats blue shells, and can cause a mini earthquake which kills nearby enemies from the yellow ones. There are also colored Yoshis, where no matter what shell you pick up, Yoshi will acquire the power of the shell that his color represents. So in other words, if you're a red Yoshi, he'll always breathe fireballs. Yoshi is also central to the plot, as not only do we have another princess kidnapping, but seven of Yoshi's dinosaur friends have been apprehended and trapped in eggs. This time we're not in the Mushroom Kingdom, although there are still plenty of mushrooms and all the other goodies that we got from that place. This time it's a prehistoric island called Dinosaur Land, which helps to explain the whole dinosaur theme. This change of scenery also reflects the soundtrack, as there are more tropical-based tunes and the landscapes are adjusted accordingly as well. This time we don't get a desert world or ice world as we've been known to in previous games. As far as power-ups go, there are actually less here than there were in Mario 3. The Mushroom, Starman, and Fire Flower return, plus a cape that you get from finding a feather, which essentially replaces the raccoon leaf. Aside from wiping out enemies with your cape and temporarily flying, you can also fly forward, and as long as you're Super Mario, you can do a spin jump which lets you break certain blocks underneath you or stomp someone out. But there is no frog suit, hammer suit, or tanuki suit, among others. However, one thing you can do, which is a new feature, is store a power-up. If you collect a second power-up, it'll appear in the box up here. So when you take a hit, it'll drop and you can use it. You can also manually cause it to drop if you hit select, which really comes in handy when, for example, you prefer to be using the fireballs as opposed to the cape. Triggering the flower will switch you off, but it will also cause you to pocket the feather. It would have been nice to store these in your main inventory to use prior to the beginning of a level from the map screen, like you did in Mario 3, but this is still great for in-game adjustments. Although it is an adjustment to lose your fireballs or cape and immediately shrink the small Mario. Also, you're going to not want to grab mushrooms when you have a superior item stored in your inventory. Speaking of the map screen, yes, the map returns here and gives you a visual of where you are and what you're doing, etc. Once you beat a stage, a path will open to the next one, but some stages have multiple exits, and different exits lead to different paths, so you might end up being led to shortcuts, special stages, or alternate routes entirely. There are more branches to this tree than Super Mario Bros. 3, but unless you're a completist, you're not going to see all of them, so the game might actually feel shorter than its predecessor, but these alternate paths certainly do kick up the replay value a notch or two, and the fact that the stages that do have the multiple exits are indicated as such with the flashing red icon makes it so that you can easily identify which stages you need to go to if you want to explore, which is definitely a welcome sight when you realize that a lot of these hidden exits are not in plain sight. 
having to dig from tide to sand across every single stage would have been tedious as all hell without the aid of these red flashy things. Aside from the alternate paths, there are also some bonus worlds. You got the Star World, which acts as a pseudo warp zone where you'll have to beat stages and find the hidden exits within those stages to connect the worlds together, and there's a special zone with some zany ass just for the hell of its stages. There are also bonus areas in the middle of stages where you get a series of question blocks, and if you can smash the three in a given row in the right order, you'll get a one up in the third block. Also, at the end of each stage, your goal is to cut the tape that shifts vertically. The higher the tape is when you cut it, the more star points you'll get. And once you get 100, you'll get to play a bonus game where a grid of blocks rotate while the icons flash, and you need to bonk them and create a streak, a la tic-tac-toe, to get a 1-up. It's in the spirit of the match games of Super Mario Bros. 2 and 3. If you don't touch the tape, you'll simply get a coin. Speaking of coins, aside from the regular coins giving you the traditional 1-up after collecting 100, you'll also get an extra life if you find enough of these large coins with Yoshi imprinted on them, known as Dragon Coins. Not every stage has them, but most of them do, and if you collect all 5 in a given stage, you'll get an extra life. All these different means of stacking up live should give you plenty of ammunition to eventually beat the game. But another thing to help you out is the one feature that Super Mario 3 really needed. A save system. After taking down the fortress stages, castle stages, and other select spots on the map, you'll be given the option to save your progress. It really makes it easier to complete the game without having to invest a whole lot of time in one sitting, or to utilize warps. I mentioned the fortresses. These are similar to Mario 3's castle stages where you have this mini castle stage in the middle of a world with a mini boss battle at the end. These are often optional stages in one of the off-beaten paths. But there are also ghost houses, which are also castle stages, but they're generally loaded with booze, hence the term ghost house. They don't have a boss, and they generally have some form of deception going on, with a hidden door to the exit or some shit. Finally, at the end of each world is a castle stage, each one occupied once again by one of Bowser's seven children, or Koopalings. This time around, they don't all fight you with stolen magic wands. They take you on with more of a variety of attack patterns. Although you do see revisits of these sequences. For example, fighting Iggy on the seesaw platform on top of lava is the same variation as this other battle with Larry later on in the game, but it's tweaked a bit. And tweaked is a good word to use in describing the overall essence of Super Mario World. It's not incredibly innovative, but it's a tweaked update of a tried and true formula. Nintendo didn't go overboard on trying to make this game seem bigger or flashier than it needed to be just because it was utilizing new hardware. The point was to make this game as fun and addicting as possible, and once again, Nintendo hit a home run. Sure, the game's visuals and sound were improved thanks to said hardware, and the inclusion of Yoshi was able to happen thanks to the new system, but that's just icing on the cake. At the end of the day, you need to make a good game for it to be, well, good. So the game starts out with a brief cutscene explaining that you're in Dinosaur Land and that Princess Toadstool has been kidnapped yet again by Bowser. You're then tossed into the map screen in the first world called Yoshi's Island, and you've already got some choices. You can either go to stage 1 on the left, or stage 2 on the right. There's also Yoshi's house in the middle, but you can only make use of this area if you have Yoshi, as there are some berries that you can have them munch on. If you bump this blue box here, a text box will pop up with a note from Yoshi that he's not home, looking for his friends that Bowser kidnapped. Just head off screen when you want to exit the area. Now stage 1 is technically optional, but I strongly advise you take it, it'll pay off later. Right off the bat, this blue turtle will slide down the hill, stomp him out. The blue Koopa Troopers are a little faster than the green or reds, and they kick their shell when outside of it. Then you'll see good old friend Bullet Bill, holy shit he put on some weight! Take a running jump to get enough height to land on him, thankfully he travels slow enough that you can retreat a bit if you have to. But don't sprint through the stage or you'll plow right into him because he does show up a couple more times. 
bump this flying block to get a flower, and then these purple dinosaurs will wander around slowly. If you stop them, they'll pick up speed a bit, so stop them again. Go up these hills to grab a dragon coin, and these piranha plants will flow out of the pipe and slowly drift down. Pass under them, or wait for them to drift back into the pipe. If you're Super Mario, you can spin bash your way through these blocks to take this pipe down where you can smash through more blocks and get a dragon coin. You'll hit a checkpoint, and then the advice block here lets you know about the extra item and space that you can use. Hop up this hill for a dragon coin, and the next advice block tells you how to use the shells. Use said box to get up here, and boink the 1-up mushroom to glide across the clouds. Just watch the massive bill on your way. There's a flower in this block, and then one more dragon coin before you meet this football turtle named Chucking Chuck, guarding the goal. Jump on him once he stops his clap thingy, tap the goal, and you're done with the stage. Also a quick note, if you get a feather in a later stage, you might want to come back to this stage to take a flight up here for a 3-up moon. That's another new power-up that gives you 3 extra lives. By the way, I mentioned how there was a flower in this block. If you are small Mario, then this would be a mushroom. So from here on out, I'll refer to any block that has a flower or a feather with that particular power-up, as opposed to the mushroom that it would be if you were small. Also, there are some blocks that have mushrooms either way, no matter what state you're in. So now, before you go on to stage two, head through this path that just opened up to the yellow switch palace, which is just a big empty room until you smash the P switch and get a shit ton of coins that appear temporarily. Scarf up as many as you can and hit the switch at the end that changes all the yellow ghost blocks throughout the game into exclamation blocks. This will make traversing over pits and whatnot easier in certain spots, not to mention providing more power-ups, which is mainly why I recommended going through stage 1 first. The second stage has a whole lineup of red troopers. Wipe them out with fireballs if you have them for some coinage, or just run underneath them, and hit the mushroom block here. Smash this block to unleash Yoshi for the first time, and right after is an advice block explaining the spinning jump smash. Eat the berries that hang as well as the Koopa Troopers and grab the Dragon Coins. There are three of them in plain sight right before the checkpoint, which is explained in the advice block right before it. Smash this block for a 1-up mushroom, and then you'll meet Monty Mole, who bursts out of the ground and runs around erratically. Smash them. Hit this block to break out a vine and climb up for some coins, including a Dragon Coin, and the last one is here by this mushroom block. Head down this pipe to get a bonus area with floating question blocks. Use these blocks to chuck up and knock them off. You'll get some coins and a 1-up. Although these blocks have a limited amount of shelf life and they can break off shit. So you're not guaranteed to get them all. But if you get the feather later on in return, you can fly up to easily get them. After surfacing, you'll find a P-switch you can grab that'll turn these coins into a staircase to make reaching the tape up top easier at the goal. The third stage is up in the cliffs, and there are a lot of ghost blocks that will block you from falling into many of the death pits, so another reason to be thankful of the Switch Palace from earlier. There's an advice block right away that explains the extra life you get from five dragon coins, and then you'll want to ascend these hills. Hopping on these swinging platforms will send you around in a circle. Jump to the next hill and grab the mushroom out of the box here. And then there's another one down here if you need an inventory spot. Wait for these platforms to extend and grab the dragon coin. And this block here will give you a Yoshi. Just watch for the paratroopers that fly around. Slip down here, drop into the pipe, and smack the P-switch to pass the lava and grab the dragon coin on your way back up. Smack the checkpoint, grab the dragon coin, and you'll get an advice block that tells you about jumping higher after stomping an enemy and holding the jump button, as well as jumping high in shallow water by holding up. Grab the flower in this block, watch the platform extensions that go vertically to this time as you press on, and grab the dragon coin here. Hit the star box here for a 1-up shroom, and grab the last dragon coin here on your way to the goal. The fourth stage is one of these old school mushroom platform levels, but with some water at the bottom. There's a mushroom in this block right off the bat, and then there are two dragon coins right after, and a flower in this block. 
Watch for the cheap cheeps that swim underneath and pop up sporadically. While traversing these little floating platforms, get off them right away or you'll slip into the water. And make sure to jump over these balls of spikes that float across the water periodically. If you have Yoshi, you can go down this pipe and eat the cacti. And there's an advice block here that explains you can exit a stage that you already completed by pausing and then pressing select. This shortcut isn't really necessary, because once you pop back out, you'll want to go back a bit anyway and grab the dragon coin, and then smack this block for an invincibility star. Leap across the water to get the dragon coin, and then you'll find the last one down the stretch with the spiked balls coming from both sides along with the cheap cheeps. Right at the goal is an advice box that explains the star point system with cutting the tape at the goals. Up next is Ziggy's Castle. The advice box at the beginning tells you about clinging onto the fence and exiting the door at the end of the room. Jump to cling to the fence and scale your way across, punching the troopers on the other side. And use the little doors to climb from the other side if you feel better about doing it that way. To get the flower in this block, smack the P-switch to turn the blocks above to coins and it'll drop. On the other side, you'll find an advice block that tells you to push Iggy into the lava to defeat him. Hit the checkpoint and enter the door, and now you're in an auto-scrolling portion. Hang back throughout this whole portion, at least until the massive protrusion from the ceiling smashes down, and then move on after it raises back up. Keep this going throughout the room. Get the flower from the floating block, and don't rush this spot with the extending platform. The auto-scrolling will stop in time for you to be able to wait for the opening if need be. The next door leads to Iggy, who scurries back and forth on the seesaw platform on the lava, tossing fireballs at you from time to time. As the advice block said, you want to push him into the lava, so smash him toward the edge. Just keep in mind that the platform is constantly changing the direction that it's tilting, so keep your focus on getting him in the same direction all the time regardless of the changing of the tilt. Otherwise you'll just keep him going back and forth the whole time. Having fireballs makes it a lot easier as you can attack him more rapidly and from a distance. Once you brutally murder Bowser's child, You'll rescue Yoshi's friend, and Mario unnecessarily blows up the castle. Seriously, why does he always do this shit? It's not like these are brand new castles or anything. Bowser just took control of them, right? And Mario is such a psychopath, he couldn't even take the time to break Yoshi's friend out of the egg before engaging in his demolition hobby. Anyway, it's on to the next world, Donut Land, aka Donut Plains. And now that you're in the second world, you can scroll across the whole map by pressing the L and R buttons. At the beginning of stage 1, you'll get a shitload of unshelled turtles flying across the sky. Avoid them or stomp and shoot them, if that tickles your fancy, and grab the dragon coin here. Then you'll find this flower that spits up 4 fireballs that hover and then drop. Wait for it and then move on, and grab the dragon coin right after. Go up this pipe for a bonus area where you ascend these rows of question blocks. If you hit each set in the right order, you'll get a 1-up mushroom. When you pop back out, go down this pipe and you'll get the cape feather and an advice box explaining it. You'll also be able to run up this pipe using this little ramp and get to practice using the cape with a wide open area to fly around and collect a shitload of coins. When you reach the end and pop back out, drop down here and smack this block to get a vine and climb up for a dragon coin. Drop back down, and you'll find Yoshi in this block, which makes dealing with this flower fuck easier. Grab the dragon coin above it. You'll find the last dragon coin in front of this pipe, and just before the exit, you'll get an advice box explaining how the levels with red dots on the map have hidden exits. The goal is right after that, but there's also a hidden exit up here which you can get to by flying. And you can also climb up using the green blocks after you unlock them later on, so you'll have to backtrack in that instance. Taking this hidden exit will open up this level, Donut Secret 1. It's underwater, and aside from the usual cheap cheeps, you've also got the Rip Van Fish. This guy is napping, but when you get close to him, he wakes up and chases you down, which is a pain in the ass because there's usually a lot of shit in your way. If you do get far enough away from him, he'll go back to sleep. There's one guarding a dragon coin here. 
Get it, and get the hell out of there. There's a flower in this block, which always makes these underwater stages easier to deal with. Especially with these napping pricks. When you go up this pipe, you'll end up in this area where you'll find a pea balloon that'll blow you up and let you float upwards. There's a flower in this box in case you need it, and two dragon coins further up. Head down this pipe when your balloon wears off, grab the dragon coin down here, and hit this block for a flower. There's another dragon coin in this tight space here. If you don't have fireballs or a cape to take out the rip fan fish, slip around and kick the block to get through. There's a pea switch here, which you'll want to grab and bring over here, grabbing the dragon coin along the way, and use the pea switch so you can get down here and get the key in the block for the hidden exit. Now if you stay the course, there's another dragon coin up here, and a rip fan fish guarding the goal. If you take the hidden exit, you'll end up at the donut secret house. Weave your way through the gap in the boo circle, and hit this P switch so you can get the spring on this block and bounce your way over the big boo and enter the door. Grab the flower in this block, and you'll notice these coins here look like they're hinting at a hidden door. The advice block lets you know that there are five entrances to the star world. Grab the P-switch here, bring it back, and use it to reveal the hidden door which leads you to the goal, opening up a pipe to the stage Donut Secret 2, which actually gives you a view of Bowser's castle from up here. There's also a hidden exit here. If you grab the P-switch and instead of bringing it to the hidden door, you use it here and get some hidden question blocks that let you smack this block for a vine that leads you to a door up here where you'll fight a giant boo and a pair of his kids. Smash this giant boo with the blocks that are on the ground. Just make sure you don't create yourself a bottomless pit to fall into. They all behave like boos normally do, except the big end will hide in the background intermittently where you can't hit it. After a few shots, he's done for, and you'll unlock a path to the first star road that takes you to the first stage of Star World, but I'll get into the details of that later. Use the Koopa Troopa shell here to smash this block and get some coins. Grab the dragon coin here, and use the spring to bounce up and get a vine that leads to a star man and a dragon coin. Now you'll meet the spiked top turtles, who are immune to fireballs, so use Yoshi or the cape to take them out. Or the invincibility in this case, otherwise just run past them. Grab this dragon coin, followed by another right after, and then watch the floating piranha plants. Wait for the safe spot to run by. Go up this pipe here for a bonus area, get the pea balloon, and float across the way for some coins. When you take the pipe back, go back and get the dragon coin before continuing on. Use the Koopa shell here to wipe out the spike tops, and then hop on this stack of paratroopers on your way to the goal. Finishing the stage leads you to a pipe that'll take you to Donut Plain Stage 3, but let's take a look at Stage 2 in case you decide to go that way. This stage is underground, and an auto-scroller. There's a mushroom in this exclamation block, and when you get in here, grab the dragon coin and wait for the opening. Just make sure you don't kick the beetle shell if you stomp on it. There's a feather in this block, but make sure you pass the dropping wall quickly, or you'll get trapped behind it. Then these green bird bats will flutter down from above. Smash them. Grab the dragon coin and back up a bit to head up this pipe, where you can take a shortcut to a hidden exit. Remember, this is one of those red dot levels. If you smack the block up top here, you'll find a vine leading you to it. If you want to stick with the full level, grab the dragon coin and smash the flying block here for a feather. Take a long leap here to get the dragon coin, and the pipe to the goal is just ahead. Taking the hidden exit will lead you to the Green Switch Palace, which is much like the Yellow Switch Palace from World 1. Head up this way and it'll lead you to the Green Switch, which fills up all those ghost blocks. Next level is a ghost house, which the advice block right away hints to you that you may get lost. Right now you're thinking you might get lost in a sea of all these damn ghosts. Stay low and move quickly to get to the first door. Remember, some of them are boos, which follow the tradition of chasing you when you're turned away. In the next room, head up the stairs and take the next door. It appears at first glance to send you to the bottom portion of the same room, but it's actually a different room with a similar look. 
Smashing this block from underneath gives you a P-switch, which produces some coins that create an arrow pointing left, which really just misleads you into going in a circle, because this hidden door, while leading to some more coins in this block, really just sends you back to the beginning of the first of these rooms. What you want to do is instead of going left, like the arrow says, instead go right and enter the door, which will put you in the bottom portion of the first of these rooms. This time, smashing the block sends a vine up that leads to a door sending you directly to the goal. Easy as pie once you figure it out, but prior to that, you might be running around in circles like a jackass. Now there's also a hidden exit in this stage. If you have a cape at the very beginning of the stage, you can fly up here to get to some 1-up mushrooms and a door to the exit. It'll open up the map to the top secret area, which is just one screen that has Yoshi, two flowers, and two feathers. You'll still have to go through the ghost house's main exit to open up the path to stage 3, which is loaded with moving platforms, so be careful with timing your jumps. Grab the feather in this former block, and snatch the dragon coin on these rotating platforms. And get a running start so you can fly up to this hidden area for some coins, including one in the dragon variety. Drop down and you'll hit an advice block that tells you you can use the L or R buttons to shift the screen in case you want to see things up ahead a little more. This works out pretty well in a situation like this where you're riding this platform on a line. Bump the on off switches along the way to connect the line so you can move forward and hit the checkpoint here. Watch out for this bindle stip fuzzy when accessing the platform and ride this platform as it attaches and reattaches to the line. Just watch out for the paratroopers, grab the dragon coin, and take the pipe here down to a 1-up bonus area. When you pop back out, you've got a few more rotating platforms and the goal is just ahead. Now onto the fourth stage. It starts right out with a yellow turtle that crawls into its shell and starts spinning like a madman. Get away from it and grab the dragon coin. Wait for the piranha plants to slip back into the pipes before moving on, but also take note that some of these pipes extend. Wait for them to drop back down, just watch out for the blue turtles on ground level. You can enter this pipe, but there's no reason to. There's nothing down here but pits and paratroopers, and you don't even get a shortcut. You basically take a scenic route, so fuck that. Now here you've got a hammer brother that hovers around tossing hammers from side to side. You could smash him by timing out when a hammer isn't on its way, or the easier route is to smash him from underneath, but the easiest way is to run past and up the side of the pipe. Kick one of these turtle shells down the way here to clear out all the holy shit Goombas! Forgot about these guys. Actually, they're technically Galoombas here, because they're rounder shaped and fall on their ass where you can pick them up and toss them like turtle shells. Anyway, slip down here and grab a flower under this block, use the spinning blocks to get back up and snag it, and there's a dragon coin right after. Slip under the pipe right after for an underground area with another dragon coin. You'll just have to use the paratroopers as a spring to get it. Then you'll pop out and have another floating hammer brother to deal with. Knock him out and hit the checkpoint. After that, you'll find a Yoshi egg in this block, so now you can eat all the Goombas and Paragoombas throughout the rest of the stage. Grab the Dragon Coin that's guarded by these two Paragoombas and hit this block. It'll award you with either a Mushroom, Flower, or Starman. The prize continuously shuffles. Grab the last Dragon Coin up ahead, and the goal is right after. Now it's Morn's Castle. Dodge the many thwomps and carefully maneuver between the ball and chains on this conveyor belt floor and grab the shroom in the block here. Go through the door and let the thwomps drop in front of you before moving on to the next door. Now this is the bulk of the stage, climbing the walls as the floors shift from side to side. Slip into this little nook to get the feather in this block, just be careful not to get squished, move quickly. Use the cape if you still have it to get dry bones out of your way and carry the spring over and bounce your way up here for some coins when the gap presents itself. And the same thing on the other side to keep moving on. When heading up this way, stop yourself here where there's a little more room, you won't get crushed. 
maneuver your way between the spikes, and the door to Morton is right after. Just stop to grab a feather here if you need it. Morton has a very basic pattern. He'll just walk up the wall, then across the ceiling. And when you're right below him, he'll drop down. So lure him kinda like a thwomp and get out of the way quickly, cause he drops a lot faster than he moves. He'll also pick up speed the more times you hit him, so adjust accordingly. And after a few shots, he's all done. You'll rescue another of Yoshi's friends, who also remains trapped in the egg, and Mario just dropkicks the shit out of the castle, bringing it to rubble. And now it's on to World 3, the Vanilla Dome, which mainly takes place underground. In the first stage, smash the floating question block for a flower, and when you get here, there are a bunch of these flippy blocks. Walk under here, smashing the beetle to use its shell to clear a path to get to the flower here, and then go back so you can get to the dragon coin right after, then up through the end to continue onward. Use the shell to get to the flower block here if you need it, and go up the pipe. Grab the star man in this block, and sprint your way through the beetles as the floor sinks into the lava. This isn't one of those ones that rises after it sinks. Once it's under, that's the end of it. So grab the dragon coin and go up the pipe. Hit the checkpoint, and then you've got a fork here. At the bottom, you've got spike tops that walk along the perimeter of these platforms. Wait for the last one to pass and sprint your way across. And there's a flower in this block. It's a dragon coin in this nook, but you'll need to be small Mario to be able to squeeze in and kick the block out of the way. There's one more dragon coin here above the paratrooper, and then you're in some tight spaces with beetles. Use the shells to clear them out, and the goal is just ahead. There's also another hidden exit at the end of the first section, but you need to hit the red switch palace later on and backtrack to get the red blocks to appear and lead you to it. The second stage has a lot of water pockets. Slip in here, and grab the flower in this block here while avoiding the cheap cheap. Smack this block to spring a vine you can climb, and move onward. Drop down here while snagging the dragon coin, and carefully slip between the cheap cheeps. There's a feather in this block here, a hidden one up right here, and a flower right after in this block. And when you pop up here, grab the dragon coin, and head back for a P-switch and another flower block. If you grab the P-switch, and bring it over here, you can hit it to activate these coins, and you can cut through here for a dragon coin, and a key for a hidden exit. Or you can press on to the rest of the level, with the option of grabbing all these coins after hitting the switch. There's a fork in the road right after the P-switch. Take the top path, let these charging chucks blast through the blocks, hit the checkpoint, Grab an item from the slot machine block, and slide down the hill for a dragon coin. Hit the P-switch to get through the blocks, and you can go down this pipe if you want. You just get a few coins in the area. But you're gonna want to backtrack a bit when you get out anyway to get the dragon coin. So it's really not much of a shortcut. Some bird bats and chucking chucks later, and the goal is waiting for you. If you take the hidden exit, you'll gain access to the red switch palace. In here, you've got a bunch of Koopa Troopers walking around between some blocks. Hit the P-switch so the yellow shell will chase after you, and quickly jump up here to lead it to killing off all the other Troopers on your way to the pipe at the end. Just make sure to slip down when the shell is on its way backward, and you'll hit the red switch and activate all the red ghost blocks. And now you can backtrack to stage 1 if you want to take that hidden exit, which leads you to the vanilla secret stage 1. Hop up these platforms while avoiding the troopers, hit this block for a feather, and spring your way up here where you can slip down for a dragon coin. Smash these next two blocks for vines to get up here, grab the dragon coin along the way, and when you get up here, head left and slip into this pocket for another dragon coin. Head back to the upper right hand portion of this area, grab the feather in this block, and use the spring to bounce your way between the paratroopers. Make sure you time this right. Grab the spring and bring it around here to reach the two dragon coins hanging out over here. And then go back to the left to spring your way up to the pipe where a charging chuck is guarding the goal. There is a hidden exit around where you have to bounce between the paratroopers. But you'll need to get to the blue switch palace later on and then backtrack. When you do, bring the spring onto the blocks and spring up here for a pipe. Pass the charging chuck to the exit, and it will open up a path to the Star Road connecting to Star World Stage 2. 
The regular exit leads to Vanilla Secret Stage 2. The first half of this stage is a shitload of green paratroopers on a very hilly terrain. You can weave your way between them or try to smash the shells into each other, but there is also help in the form of Yoshi, who shows up in this first block here. Use a shell to get a feather from this block, and you can fly way up here for some coins, including a dragon coin, although you might want to do this before getting Yoshi. There's another dragon coin right after that, followed up by a flower in this block. Grab the dragon coin here, hit the checkpoint, and grab the feather from the music box here. Just watch out for the parachuting the bombs as you press on. Carefully slip onto this block for a dragon coin, and then go down this pipe. Hit the P-switch, and race across the blocks for the last dragon coin, and you'll reach the goal right after you get shot out of the pipe on your way back up. This leads you to Vanilla Secret Stage 3. This is one of those on the surface of the water stages, and a shitload of fish flop out of the water, but they won't hurt you. They're nothing really more than flying platforms. If you don't have a cape, use them to get up here for a feather and a dragon coin. Then grab the coins along your way, including a dragon one here, and then you've got this spiked fish that hangs out in this region. Use the fish to get up here for a feather if you need it, otherwise keep going, hit the checkpoint, and head up here for a dragon coin. Ride that fish the rest of the way, scarfing up all the coins you can, and grab the last two dragon coins, one right before the pipe to the goal, and the other one right after. This opens up the door to the Vanilla Fortress, which is an underwater castle. Swim your way between the ball and chains and the fish bones, and you have a fork in the road, maybe. If you're small Mario, you can slip under the spikes here that leads you to a pipe to the next area. You'll deal with a few thwomps and dry bones, grab the feather in this block, and on the second thwomp you'll actually want to swim over it after it drops rather than run under it on its way back up. Then you'll reach the pipe that you'll emerge from if you took the other path in the fork earlier. This path has dry bones and fish bones, as well as a tight space to swim between the spikes and the fish bone. Be careful, and grab the mushroom in this block. Either way, when you're at this point, you're almost at the end. Just carefully swim between the ball and chains and fish bones, and grab the mushroom right before the door to the boss battle with four triceratopses called Resner. They'll stand on these rotating platforms and spit fire your way. As time goes on, the floor underneath breaks off at the edges, giving you the potential to drop into the lava, which is problematic because you won't want to rush this fight and catch a fireball in the ass. You can defeat these guys with fireballs of your own, or in the more likely scenario, you'll want to bump them from underneath. One shot will send each one seaward. The cape will help a lot with positioning, especially when you kill two of them and the floor really starts going tits up. After taking out all four of them, you're done with the stage and the fortress is destroyed. This will lead you to the Butter Bridge Stage 1, but because this connects you to another whole world from another direction, let's go back to the stage that comes up after you beat Vanilla Dome Stage 2, which is the Ghost House. Slip between the swirling ghosts to get a dragon coin, and then there's a flower in the block above it. Avoid the boos, grab the dragon coin, and watch out for the giant boo. Keep yourself facing him and slip by quickly. But before you do, slip down here and activate the vine in this block to get up here for a dragon coin. Now you can slip down here for a door to the next area, but instead head back, grab the feather in this block, and lure the giant boo by facing away up here and then spinning back around so you can slip under him. Slip between all these ghosts, grab the dragon coin, and smack the coins in the block while you're waiting for the opening, and enter the door. Watch out for these big green orbs that float around. They'll hurt you upon contact. Grab the coins along the way, grab the P-switch hidden in this spinny block, clear the coins here, and hit the switch to activate the door to the goal. In the third stage, you'll take this skull raft across the lava. Watch out for the eyes here. Once they dip under, they'll spring out immediately after. So do a jump when you see this. There'll be two question blocks flying around. One is just a coin, and the other is a one-up, which is tough to get. You'll want to let it pass you for a bit so you can get it on the way down and still have enough to reach the raft. You're probably better off doing this if you have a cape. When you get back onto the land, hit the block here for a flower, but wait for the piranha plants to dip back into the pipes first. 
grab the dragon coin here, and set sail once again on the skull raft, where you'll deal with more of these creatures. Smash the hidden block here to get onto the pipe, and get a feather in this block. If you have the cape, get a running start and fly up here for a 3-up moon. And if you fly to the other side, you'll reach a pipe to a bonus area. If you don't have the cape, you'll take another raft ride and there'll be a dragon coin right after you get off. Then there'll be another one you'll want to start up, but take the upper path to hook up with it later. Just don't dilly-dally for too long. Take the next pipe for some coins, including a dragon coin, use the paratrooper as a springboard to reach it, grab the feather in this block, and go back up. When you emerge, there'll be a red shell bouncing around in here. If you can stomp and kick it up here, you'll get Yoshi. You'll take another raft ride. Along the way, hop onto this platform so you can reach the dragon coin, and then you've got a bunch of spike tops in a tight space. This is a lot easier if you have Yoshi to eat them. Otherwise, you'll have to slip between them. There's another dragon coin ahead, a feather in this block, and if you have the cape, you can fly up here for the last dragon coin, and the goal is shortly after. The fourth stage is another mushroom tree stage, this time with constant bullet bills, reminiscent of Super Mario 1. But this time you get some that sneak up from behind you, so be sure to keep the screen centered throughout. Grab the dragon coin, and use these hanging things as a springboard to get to higher places. Slip down here past the paratrooper for a mushroom, and then bounce your way across these things for another dragon coin, and a feather right after in this block. Soon after is the checkpoint, and then you'll get bullets that charge after you simultaneously from basically everywhere. Chill on the hanging thing until the bullets pass by, and then slip into the second pipe for a long raft ride. Watch the blocks, especially here when it gets really tight. Dug under if you have to, and grab the dragon coin along the way. When you pop back up, backtrack a bit, and slip under here to get to this spot with all the question blocks. Hit the spinny block to get the one-up shroom, and then bonk it back the other way so you can grab it. Right before the goal, the last dragon coin will dangle in front of the paratrooper get it and hit the goal on your way to the last stage of the world, the castle. So now we're on to Lemmy's castle, where we first meet the Magic Hoopas. They'll toss a chunk of magic shit in your direction, and then disappear and reappear in random spots. If you're in a tight space where you can't do anything to squash or shoot them or jump over the attack, give yourself some distance and crouch cause the magic shit will curve upward after a bit. Across the way here, one of the magic Koopas below will blast away one of the blocks above you which actually clears a path for you. So go down that way, head right, and grab the feather from this block. Hop across the logs, grab the P-switch here, and activate it so you can access this door here, which not only provides a tiny shortcut to the next area, but also gives you a checkpoint and a one-up shroom in this block. You'll otherwise have to contend with a couple more Magic Koopas and some Podobu Fireballs. Now in this last stretch, the ground will sink and rise back and forth in the lava, so get to high ground and wait a sec before advancing. Same thing here, wait for these walls to rise and catch them on the way up. Slip down here for this mushroom and just wait inside, you won't get crushed. Smash the dry bones and be ready for them to reanimate as you wait for the opening. Grab the feather on this block and the door that leads to the fight with Lemmy. There's a series of seven pipes in this room, and a Podobu that slowly sails around the room. Lemmy, along with two decoys, will pop out of three of the pipes at any given time briefly. Watch out for them, and try to smash Lemmy with the little time that you have. You don't even get half the screen to work with, so keep your eyes peeled particularly on the Podobu. It'll be the most troublesome part of this whole ordeal, and smash Lemmy when you get a good look. After enough shots, he's done for, and you'll have rescued another of Yoshi's friends without freeing him. But of course, you do take the time to obliterate a historic building, this time with a hammer. Man, Mario is savage. So the next world is the Twin Bridges, and the first place you'll encounter is the Cheese Bridge area. You'll get a feather right away in this block, which is really useful when transferring between these platforms. Hop on each of them to activate them along the wires. 
Watch the saws as they come towards you, jump over them, or duck underneath them if they're right in your face. Get on the bottom one to grab this dragon coin, and then make your way back up to the top one to get another one, plus a feather in this block. Then get on the bottom one for a third dragon coin, and hop off before you're taken into the pit. Get the checkpoint, and smack this block for some wings, which if you're riding Yoshi, you'll be able to access a rare bonus world where you fly around and collect coins and dragon coins amongst these fuzzy fucks. When you finish the segment, you'll be sent back to the map screen and have to go back through the stage again, but you'll have an extra life if you got all the dragon coins. These ropes that hang will shift back and forth on these pulleys, grab them to take a short ride across, and grab another dragon coin here. You can slip down this pipe if you want to, but it's pretty fucking useless. It's just a quick little area with some moving platforms and a section where some bullet bills that fire diagonally. It's not even a shortcut. You'll otherwise just get a couple of pulleys if you stay overland. The home stretch has some saws in the way of your pulley ride. If you stay at the tippity top, you'll be fine until you get to here where you'll need to go under. Grab the dragon coin, watch the vertically moving saws, and the goal is just ahead. Now if you have Yoshi, you can access a hidden exit by actually bouncing off the saws down the stretch, and then letting Yoshi fall down the pit as you jump back out so you actually bypass the exit. And then you'll get a 3-up moon and the hidden exit right after, which opens up the door to the Soda Lake. It's an underwater stage that's loaded with cheap cheeps and these bullets that get dropped from under the skull and crossbone banners from Mickey Mouse, I guess. Just make sure you're out of the line of fire when these things come out, which is easier said than done in these tight fucking spaces. The flower in this block makes things a lot easier because you can wipe out the cheap cheeps and clear yourself a lot more room. Grab the dragon coin here, but back out immediately so you don't get tagged by the bullet. There's another one here, swim up from underneath to avoid the bullet, and then get another one down here. Slip down and swim underneath this barrage of bullets, and then get the next two dragon coins along the way. Squat down to let the bullets pass over you, and the goal is just ahead, which leads you to the star road connecting you to Star World Stage 4. And now on to Cookie Mountain. Stomp out the shellless Koopa and Mole right away, and watch out for the Sumo Bro that stands atop these blocks. It'll stomp his feet, which causes a stream of fire to form below. Wait a bit for it to die down, and then smash him from underneath, and get the feather in the block up top. Grab the shell, bring it up here, and kick it to rid this path of moles. There'll be a couple more Sumo Bros on these magic blocks. Remember these? Wait for the opening and leap up to grab the dragon coin. There's a checkpoint after that, and then right after, smack this block for a vine that'll lead you to a dragon coin. Head down this pipe for a water area with a fat spiked fish you'll need to jump over and head backwards actually, but it'll lead you to an area of clouds at the top of the stage that you'll be able to just blow by most of the area that you've already passed, and there's a one-up mushroom along the way. When you pop back out, if you have the red blocks, you can walk here and hit this block for Yoshi, and there's a dragon coin right after that. Smash the slot machine box to get an item here if you have the cape, and there'll be one more dragon coin right before the sumo bros on these blocks. There's a feather in this block, and the goal is right after that, and it's on to Ludwig's castle. But first, if you decided back in World 3 to take the shortcut through Butter Bridge, here's what you get. Butterbridge Stage 1 is an auto-scroller with a bunch of these pairs of mushroom trees that sink when you stand on them, but work in tandem with its brother. When one sinks, the other one raises, so you're pretty much wandering back and forth to set up your jump when the screen shifts. But don't move ahead too quickly, because these gray platforms drop as soon as you land on them. So wait the screen out a bit so you have room. Grab the three dragon coins right in a row, using the platform seesaw deal to easily grab the third one, and having the red blocks really comes in handy in this spot so you don't have to use the paratroopers as a boost. When you see this dragon coin down here, just let this tree sink down until you can reach it, and then continue onward. 
You'll find a feather under this block. Use the spinny blocks underneath to get it and continue upward. And then there's one more dragon coin on your way down this platform toward the goal. The path now opens up for Butter Bridge Stage 2. All the enemies are super troopers, but there are a shitload of them, so don't rush your way through. Use the shell here to toss up to this block for a feather, and then you can fly all the way up here for a dragon coin, and then there's another one right after. Watch out for these two pricks that hang out up here tossing shells, hop up here to get the dragon coin, and then hit the checkpoint right after. Take this pipe down and ride the rope across the way for some coins including a dragon coin. When you pop back out, you've got a bunch of super troopers that come in pairs or even triplets. Carefully slip between them, and there's one more dragon coin down here. But to get it, you need to bounce off one of the super troopers that fly down here. But it's tricky to time, I don't really recommend it, and right after that is the goal. This opens up the path to Ludwig's castle, so whichever way you decided to go, here's where we are. The first area is a narrow ass corridor with swinging chained balls. Watch their movements and maneuver your way between them. This stretch right here you'll have to be meticulous with your timing and there'll be a mushroom at the door to the next area, which has a dropping spiked ceiling. Hit the switch here to reverse the ceiling's descent, but you're gonna want to put your foot on the gas anyway, because once it reaches the top, it's gonna come back down. Now you climb a series of these fences with Koopa Troopas abound. Climb up and slip into this nook here for a feather. Then continue onward and keep yourself to the left, punching out troopers on the opposite side and maneuvering your way between the ones close by. You'll get to the top and this door leads to Ludwig. He'll spit out a few fireballs just like his old man, curl up into his shell and slide back and forth and then do a slow spinning jump into the air. Smash his head when he's in the fireball stage, and avoid him otherwise. After a few hits, he's all done, and Mario rescues the next Yoshi friend and implodes the castle. So now we're on to the Forest of Illusion, which will turn out to be an appropriate name. In stage 1, you'll meet this caterpillar right away called Wigglers, who walk around slowly, but if you stomp them, they'll get pissed, turn red, and then move faster, and follow you. And they're immune to your cape and fireballs, so just run by them. Grab the flower in this block, and there'll be another Wiggler and some Galoombas, which you can use to knock off the Wigglers, as well as shells. So keep that in mind when you run into these dickheads. Also, Yoshi is in this block, so hop on him, because he can eat the Wigglers too. Smack this block for a 1-up, and then use the music block to knock it up and grab it as you jump across the pit. Grab an item out of the mystery box, and tread lightly around the boxes from here on out as Troopas and Galoombas break out of some of them as you get close. You'll see the alternate exit underneath this platform. If you grab the pea balloon in this box when you drop down, you'll be able to float across and get the key in the block. Just keep in mind that you can only float for a limited amount of time, so don't wait too long for the paratrooper to get out of your way. If you stay on the regular path, you're almost at the end. You got a floating hammer brother right before the goal. So the next path you take depends entirely on which exit you took in the last stage. If you take the alternate exit, you'll reach the ghost house, but if you take the regular exit, you'll get the stage 2, which takes place underwater. There's a feather in the green block right away, which will help you tremendously with the cheap cheeps. So take your time if you see cheap cheeps swimming by. Let them pass, or swim through if you find an opening. Or if you have the cape, swipe at them. The urchins, on the other hand, are much larger and basically block your way. They move from one side to the other, either horizontally or vertically. Do the same, wait for an opening, and then burst through. There's a dragon coin in this nook here, but there's not a lot of time to get it before the urchin comes back. So grab this block on the right first, and smash it to free up space. There's a flower in this block up here, which makes things easier as far as dealing with the cheap cheeps, and rip van fish. There's one of these sleeping bastards guarding a dragon coin in this nook right after the flower, and if you go back and drop down, there'll be another dragon coin that's also guarded by a van fish. Go back through the middle section to continue onward, 
maneuver your way between the urchins, grab the dragon coin in this little nook, and then drop down for a mushroom in this block. And the wall back here is an illusion, as hinted by this Rip Van Fish snoozing over here. Passing through will take you to a hidden exit, which leads you to the Blue Switch Palace. There are two P-switches here, the blue one turns the blocks into coins, and the gray one turns the coins into blocks. So grab a few coins, hit the gray one, and then take the blue one to give yourself a path to the top row. Going through the pipe at the end will lead you to the blue switch, which, as you should know by now, activates all the blue ghost blocks, but you'll have to go back to stage 2 to complete it. Right after the hidden exit area is the home stretch, which is actually wide open, but there are a shit ton of van fish, as well as some charging chucks. There's one more dragon coin up here in the ceiling, grab it if you can, otherwise book it to the goal which is just ahead, which will open up the path to stage 3, but first let's take a look at the ghost house. Like I said before, if you took the hidden exit in stage 1, your path opens up to the ghost house. The first room is tight as hell with boos, including some big boos that you'll want to lure towards you a bit so you can slip by. Don't worry about the doors and dragon coin overhead, you'll get to them in a bit. There is a dragon coin and feather in this block right before the door at the end of the room. The next room is overflowing with boos that float overhead. Run fast through this room or they'll eventually get low enough to fuck you up. On your way, get the flower in this flying block, then there's a flower in this one. And three more dragon coins right before the P-switch. There's a one-up shroom down here in this block. Grab it, take the P-switch, and take it to the end of the room to smash it to make this door appear. If you fuck up, go through this door back here and it'll send you toward the end of the first room. When you get to this door, it'll take you to the overhead portion of the first stage, where those doors and coins were. You just have to go right to left. Run past the booze, and you have two options. The first door takes you to the exit, and the second door also takes you to an exit. But there's also a 3-up moon, and there's also a dragon coin between the two doors. Now if you take the 3-up exit, it doesn't open up a path on the map, so you'll have to go back into the house to hit the regular exit. But it's worth it for the extra lives, providing you don't lose them all when going back through the stage again. Finishing this stage will connect you to stage 4, but first let's take a look at stage 3. Throughout this stage, enemies will float by in bubbles. If they come into contact with you or an object, it'll break and release them, so steer clear from them. They'll also break after being on screen for a long enough period, so don't let them hang around for too long either. Grab this dragon coin, spring up here, and smash this block to get Yoshi. And there's a 1-up bonus room down this pipe. When you emerge, you can go back if you want to eat some berries that you passed by earlier. You'll see a mushroom floating by, so this is one bubble you'll actually want to break. Jump onto this block and knock the spring down by smashing the block from underneath to send it down. Then bring it over here to spring up. Grab the dragon coin, hit the checkpoint, and there's another floating mushroom and another dragon coin right after, all while weaving your way between the bubbles. Hop up these coin blocks for another dragon coin, and there'll be some charging chucks at the home stretch. Hop on the blocks above them to get to the last dragon coin, and the exit is straight ahead. Or you can go down this pipe and smash the block for the alternate exit. Taking the regular exit will connect you to the ghost house, but the alternate exit will lead you to Roy's castle, which is why this is the Forest of Illusion. But first, let's take a look at stage 4. A lack of two will appear with a 1-up mushroom on a fishing line. If you grab it, you'll get the 1-up, but then the lack of two starts tossing spinies down. So this is one of those watch out for the spinies in front of you and the ones coming out of the sky, not to mention all the other shit in front of you stages. You can bypass the 1-up if you want. It does make the first half of the stage a lot easier, but it's worth risking it for the biscuit because if you die, you'll be able to grab the 1-up at the beginning of the stage you get anyway. You're only risking whatever power-up you have acquired. Anyway, grab the mushroom and dragon coin up here. Just watch where the Lakitu is at the time. Watch out for these Lakitus in the pipes. They'll peer out and toss spinies of their own. 
grab an item from the slot machine block, grab the dragon coin down here, and get a flower from this block here, smashing whatever spinies land on this strip. Get on this moving pipe for another dragon coin, and there's a checkpoint up here where you'll need the pipe ahead for a boost. Right before the checkpoint though, there's a pipe you can go down that leads to an underwater area that has some coins and cheap cheeps. Not exactly a shortcut, but you can get an extra 15 coins down here if you want. Smack the P-switch to reveal a bunch of coins in this spot, and by this point you'll notice the Lakitu has fucked off. But he'll re-emerge here, and even if you bypass the 1-up earlier, he won't tempt you this time either way, and will be tossing spinies. The fourth dragon coin is kind of elusive. If you wipe out the Lakitu with a fireball, you can commandeer the cloud and fly around the stage, including up here where the dragon coin is. You can also fly back to where the P-switch was and take this pipe down here to a hidden exit. You can also take this pipe by simply flying if you have the cape. If you stay the course, there's one more dragon coin between the pipes. Just watch the piranhas and the charging chuck, and the exit is just ahead. So the next stage is Roy's castle, but if you took the hidden exit earlier, the path will open to the forest secret area. The vast majority of the stage is a massive pit with two winged platforms. Once you land on one, they'll start rotating in long ass circle patterns as they move forward. Bounce around between the two platforms to position yourself in the general area you want to be in. Stay low to get the first dragon coin, then get up high for a feather in this box and a dragon coin above it. Then drop down again for a flower in the box, then up high, which is where you want to stay for the rest of the stage. There are three more dragon coins up here, and a one up in this box. During all this shit, you've got paratroopers trying to cramp your style, so knock them out of your way, or avoid them altogether. And hit the goal to finish the stage, which unlocks the path to the forest fortress. The first section has a bunch of buzz saws and the massive protruding smashy things. Stay as far left as you can without coming into the range of the saw so you can see the ceiling coming down in front of you. Once it raises, pass through and then stop as soon as you're out of the next saw's range. The colored blocks here help in crossing the last stretch of this area quite a bit. After entering the door, be ready to jump over the rolling saw right away and jump over both saws and quickly run up the wall and grab the mushroom in the block here. Stay up on these blocks to avoid the saws underneath, just watch out for the pedobus that pop up before moving on. Let the saws in these tight spaces roll across before you advance, jump up here for a feather in this block, and run up the wall for the door and you'll get another battle with the Resner quadruples. It's the same as earlier. Beating the stage will advance you to the Star Road connecting to Star World Stage 3. So now it's Roy's castle. You'll hop on this platform of blocks that takes you on a ride, but it's like a snake and starts taking all these weird turns all while fireballs come at you every now and again. Stay in the back half of the platform, about a third of the way across. You'll be able to stay far enough away from the edge while still being able to react to where the platform moves, as well as keeping you out of the trajectory of the fireballs. When you reach land, stay on the platform. It'll take you over some spikes, which are on the ceiling too. Keep the same strategy of staying back, but watch the ceiling for the spikes that are a little discolored and shake a bit. Those will drop off the ceiling and grab the dragon coins along the way. You'll find a P-switch once you land. Watch out for the spike right above it that drops. Bring it over here and smash it so the one up drops, but watch the fireballs from underneath as well as the flames in front of you that the statues fire. Time your jumps on these shifting platforms, stay close to the center so you're always on something tangible, and the feather in this block will be able to help you control your positioning across these things on your way to the door ahead. Here you'll fight Roy, and it's basically the same exact fight as Morn earlier, where he climbs the wall, drops from the ceiling when he's above you, and picks up speed after each time you hit him. Only difference here really is that the walls will close in as time passes by, giving you a little less room to work with. After a few shots, he's done for and Mario saves another Yoshi friend and blows up another castle, despite a delayed reaction, and now it's on to the Chocolate Island. 
in stage one, you'll meet the Dino Rhinos, who simply walk towards you, but if you smash them, they'll turn into mini rhinos that spit flames in the air. So watch out for this if you run into these guys, or spawn them yourself via the Dino Rhinos. Hit this flying block for a flower, grab the dragon coin, and head down this pipe to fire yourself over the pit up ahead. Use the spring to get the checkpoint, hit the P-switch to get across, and grab the dragon coin. There's another flower in the flying box here. Hit this block to get Yoshi, grab the dragon coin, and there's a feather in this green block. Now you need this pipe to fire you across the pit, and there are two ways. This pipe here will take you directly to it. You'll get another dragon coin, and the goal is just to head. The other way is down through this pipe where you have to take the scenic route through the water and in between all these fish you have to maneuver between. But at the beginning of this area is a block with a 1-up, so it's up to you if you want to risk it. The pipe at the end of this will take you to the same exit. Next up is the ghost house, which has a gap in the floor that shifts back and forth. Which is a bit of an optical illusion when the ghosts float by. So stay back so the pit doesn't reach you. Crouch down to let the ghosts pass by you, and then jump over the pit when you see it on your way back towards you. Slip down here to get a feather out of the block, maneuver your way between the ghosts, and don't touch the gray flame that's being dangled from above. You'll get to a door at the end of the room, and in the next area, you'll notice these gray blocks that shift when you face the other way. And it turns out, they're actually boos in disguise, but they turn back into blocks when you face them. So grab this flower out of the first block, and you'll notice a door up top that you can't reach normally. Keep heading right, watch out for the buddy boos, and get the one up in this block. Now lure one of the block boos back to where the opening is that leads you to the door. Try to position it so it's about in the center as much as possible, so you can reach it from the floor, and reach the platform up top which leads you to the goal. Stage 2 is next, and the advice block right away tells you the amount of coins you collect or time remaining will dictate where you end up. More on that in a bit. So there are a bunch of dino rhinos here, some coin boxes, a couple dragon coins, and a Yoshi egg in this block before you reach a pipe that'll lead you to one of three areas. If you collect 8 coins or less in the first area, you'll go through this area with a bunch of red paratroopers. Smash them and watch your footing on your way to the pipe. Now back to the first pipe. If you collect anywhere between 9 and 20 coins, you'll end up in this area with a bunch of dinosaurs. If you have Yoshi, you can easily eat them, otherwise try to avoid them so you don't get a bunch of fast dinos chasing you around. Jump off this spring to get across the pit, grab the dragon coin over the pipes, and grab the flower in the box here before the pipe. Now back to the first pipe again. Supposedly if you collect 21 coins or above, you'll enter this area where you'll get a feather and be able to fly across the sky. Problem is, I don't know how the hell you get that many coins here. I've only been able to get up to 20 before running out of options. And you can only do it if you have the fire flower and shoot down these rhinos to get your bonus coins. So I have no footage of this area. I have no idea how the hell you get there, but there is a dragon coin. Now no matter which of these three areas you take, the next area is determined by how much time is left. If there are over 250 seconds left on the clock, you'll reach a couple of charging chucks that guard a key to the hidden exit. If there are between 235 and 249 seconds left, you'll end up in this short hilly area with some rhinos and a dragon coin before hitting a pipe to the final segment. And if there are 234 seconds or less, you'll end up in this area with mushrooms floating in bubbles, and a dragon coin in the middle of them. Now the final segment is determined by how many dragon coins you've collected. If you got three or less, you'll end up in this short stretch with some dinosaurs before the goal. If you got all four of the available dragon coins, you'll end up here where a P-switch is available for you to turn the coins into blocks to lead you to the goal at the end. But to get the fifth and final dragon coin, you'll have needed to hit the blue switch palace earlier or you won't be able to get it without falling to your death. So if you took the normal exit in stage 2, the path will have opened for stage 3. This stage is filled from tide to sand with these swinging platforms. Time your jumps carefully, grab the dragon coin here, and take the low route from this one to the feather that's in this block. 
Now, if you move across the platforms, keep in mind that you can use the center block as a platform in case you miss, or need that space for whatever reason. Just knock the Koopa Troopa off. Grab the dragon coin here, and take this pipe up here to get a shitload of coins. Hop on the platform and let it swing you around, changing your positioning each time to maximize the amount of coins. Just make sure to grab the dragon coin on your way down. Now when you emerge, you'll be sent a lot further into the level, including past the checkpoint. I don't recommend going back just to get it, but one thing you could do is bypass the pipe. The checkpoint is shortly after that. Hit it, grab the feather in the block, and then backtrack to the pipe. In case you stay the course, there are fuzzies that hover around the perimeter of the center block. Hop around the platform to avoid them, grab the feather here if you can manage working your way around the fuzzy, and get the dragon coin on your way to the next platform. Shortly after that, you'll get a 1-up out of this block, and a vine out of this block, which leads you to the exit. But this gets you fucking nowhere. It doesn't unlock another path on the map at all. To get to where you need to go, you need to follow the clues on the arrows here. With a cape equipped, fly up and past the goal, then fly across the large pit, getting as much distance as you possibly can, and you'll get three one-ups in these blocks right before the goal. So next up is the fortress. There'll be these wooden pencil looking spikes that pop in and out of the ceiling and floor. Wait for the opening before advancing, let this one raise up before you make the narrow jump, and grab the feather out of the block here. Also bear in mind the old school flames that come firing from a distance while you maneuver between the pencils. You'll hit a checkpoint, and then the door takes you into the next area which is loaded with thwomps. Lure them to drop before you advance, and when you get to the baby thwomps, put yourself against the edge here so they jump over you. Grab the feather in this block, and let the pairs of baby thwomps jump towards you so you can slip underneath them. When you get to the spikes, you'll need to jump out and steer yourself back to get them to drop, as they're a little bit out of reach here. Although if you got the red switch, you'll block this last one off entirely. There'll be a feather in this green block right before the door, which leads to another boss battle with Resner. Take them out the same way as before, and another fortress is destroyed. So now onto stage 4. This level is underground and mostly consists of these 45 degree angled platforms that shift back and forth. Grab the first dragon coin early in this little burrow here, follow the line of platforms, and wait until you see one in the corner when you drop down. There's a big pit under so you don't want to take any wild guesses. When you get to land here, step back a bit for a dragon coin, and then there's another by these block stairs. Bump these blocks for a P-switch, which will open up these blocks here to a dragon coin, and then this way to a pipe that leads you to a little bonus area. Here you've got another P-switch, which turns a long series of blocks underneath into coins. As you drop, you'll notice pipes on the right that you can't reach with some prizes in front. Any one of these pipes will take you back to the main level, so the idea here is to bring the switch over here first, smack it, and then time it so that you'll land on the blocks when the switch time runs out, and get some 1-ups, as those are the best items available. The best one being 5 1-ups 6 rows down, right smack in the middle. So try dropping about 8 seconds after hitting the switch to land here, or use the cape to slow yourself down. Worst case scenario is dropping too early cause at the very bottom you get diddly poo. For the record, the second row down has the last dragon coin, but you'd rather get multiple 1-ups than just one, right? Anyway, you'll pop back out and after some moles and a charge and chuck and home stretch is the goal. Now on to stage 5, where you'll see some spinies surrounded by blocks. The P-switch here naturally will free them, but first bump this block here for Yoshi, and make sure to bring the switch off the block so you don't drop into the pit. This switch only turns the brown blocks to coins, so it will free the spinies, but it will also open the door for this pipe which leads to a 1-up bonus area. You'll pop back out at the checkpoint, but first head back to the beginning, grab the dragon coin along the way, and you can reuse the P-switch. Drag it over here to get the dragon coin that's trapped in here. This is a good spot to fly up here for another dragon coin. 
There's a second P switch up here, but this one turns all the yellow blocks into coins. So it's really just for the sake of collecting more coins. Take this pipe down for a small bonus area with cheap cheeps floating in bubbles, with the occasional mushroom. There's a dragon coin right before the pipe that brings you to the same checkpoint spot as before. Hop across the moving pipes, grab the dragon coin, and once you get to the last pipe, stop and watch for these shifting block platforms. They'll alternate between shifting vertically and horizontally. When you land on them, camp out in the center if you're gonna stay still at all. At the home stretch, Charge and Chuck will be chilling on this pipe. Smash him, but be ready to steer yourself back cause you'll bounce off him. And take him down on the second attempt while grabbing the last dragon coin. A few more Charge and Chucks at the end, and the goal is right after. And now we're at Wendy's castle, but there's another way to get here. Remember the hidden exit from stage 2? Well, if you went that away, you'll unlock this path down a pipe that leads to a cliff looking down on Bowser's castle, and you'll enter the chocolate secret stage. Jump off the spring surrounded by lava, and you'll encounter a few charging chucks kicking footballs at you. Use the beetle shells nearby to wipe them out if you don't have any weapons, and grab the feather in this block. Now you can take this pipe up here that takes you to a floating hammer brother over some dropping platforms, but there's nothing to collect in here. And the only thing you'll do is bypass a charging chuck, so pick your poison. The checkpoint is ahead, and you'll take a pipe to the next area, which is loaded with buzzy beetles, which you can slide down the hills to wipe out. Just watch out for the chompers in this one spot. You'll enter another pipe, and you've got a series of spike tops that are fairly close to each other. Carefully land in between them, and run quickly when you get on these discolored platforms, because they'll start sinking into the lava. You'll come back to regular land, and there'll be a shitload of charging chucks. Grab the flower on this block if you can, and then you'll get another string of sinking platforms with a dragon coin right before the pipe to the goal. This will unlock a path that sends you back to Chocolate Island and Wendy's Castle, skipping over several stages. So no matter which path you chose, we're at Wendy's Castle now. And right off the bat, you get slammed by this massive spike of, well, spikes. Wait for it to drop, and then spring up when it's on its way up. Watch out for the buzzsaw that follows this line, crouch down in this nook, let this one pass, and then jump over this one using the nook up top. Be careful on this jump between the Padobus, especially if you don't have the red blocks here to help you. There'll be more of these spiked spikes dropping down, but this time with buzz saws coming too. Avoid them, but be sure to advance when there's an opening as soon as you get the chance. Wait for this saw to be on its way up before jumping onto the block here. You'll need a decent speed boost to reach it. There's a mushroom in this yellow block here and soon after it's checkpoint and a door to the next area. Here you've got sparks that travel the perimeter of the platforms they patrol. Wait for the opening and smash the block for a mushroom. Wait for the ground to shift its way back up and leap out when the slow moving spark is out of your way. Take the moving platforms as they shift closer to your jumping range and stay out of the way of the sparks. Just keep jumping over them if you need to wait a bit. When you get here, it looks as though this will be an absolute nightmare. But really, just worry about the top one, as it's the only one where you'll deal with one spark. Just wait for the platform to be up high, run straight across when he's down below, and grab the feather in this block on your way to the boss fight in this door. The battle with Wendy is the same design as Lemmy's from earlier with the whole whack-a-mole concept. Except this time the pipes are all lined up in a straight line, making it easier to traverse, but there is a second fireball bouncing around instead of one. Once again, keep the majority of your focus on the fireballs, and shift to bonking Wendy when they pop out of the pipes. After three shots, she falls into the lava, and Mario saves another egg-trapped captive while wiping out another castle, literally wiping it clean with a broom. So before you actually enter the Valley of Bowser, you've got a sunken ghost ship in the way. Swim your way between the bullet bills and grab the feather in this block. You'll then go down a pipe to the inside of the ship. Now it's a wide open area, but there are a shit ton of boos that sporadically appear and disappear. 
swim like mad when they're gone, but anticipate their reappearance and slow down so you can either tread water in between or weave between them if you feel comfortable with that. You'll have to swim through the gaps of these boo circles all the while turning to face the boos so they don't chase you. When you go down the pipe, you'll get a star man as you drop down this long ass fall. There are dragon coins in here. First ones at the left, then the right, then the center. And a mushroom will drop down along with you during this. Then staying down the middle is a platform with another star man in this block. Then there's another dragon coin to the left, and then the right center. The invincibility will wear off by now if you didn't get the second one. So if that's the case, avoid the big spiked balls, grab the one-ups that drop into the water, and then swim up here for this question mark ball that ends the stage. So now you're in the Valley of Bowser proper, and the first stage is underground. Take the lower path here to get the charge and chuck to plow through all these blocks where you'll get a dragon coin when you pass through. By the way, this entire stage is nothing but charging chucks and moles. Go back and take the upper path, jump over the moles, and take the upper path to the next dragon coin before going back. Take the upper path here, jump up this way, use the pocket up here to get over the mole, and smack the checkpoint here. Use the mole to get across the chompers, and grab the three up moon over here. Head up here and take the third path from the bottom for a dragon coin. And then drop down here and take this path for another. Drop back down, let the mole chase you back, and then hop over him. Smack this block for a vine, head this way, let the mole drop in here and get the dragon coin. Then take this vine the rest of the way up for a pipe that leads you to a 1-up bonus area. But the bad news is you emerge way the hell back here on the lower path right around where the checkpoint is. So make your way back through the stage, take the lower path where you sprung the vine up, and let the charging chuck plow through this shit to open up the pipe to the goal. Now on to stage 2. The discolored chunks of land will shift up and down. Watch out for the bird bats from above when you get up high, and grab this feather quickly cause this yellow shell will come out of nowhere and can trap you down here before the ground becomes reachable. Grab the dragon coin here, and a mushroom in this block right before the checkpoint. You'll get wings in this block, but of course you'll need Yoshi, so you'll probably have to go back to a previous level to summon him and bring him to this stage. Once you equip the wings, you'll be immediately sent to a bonus coin area, and you'll have beaten the stage without the need of the regular exit. But assuming you're sticking to your guns, you'll then have a long stretch where the ground shifts and you have a short gap as a safe space. Traverse slowly, only move on when you see the next gap that you can use, camp out in there, and then move on to the next one. Patience is key here. And remember to grab the dragon coin early in the area of this nook. When you're on the top level, wait for the ground to move down before advancing, and vice versa. And don't go for the coins against the wall here. The ones on the bottom are doable, but don't bother with the two back here. It's a death trap. And is it really worth two coins to go down in here in the first place? Just take the pipe. Next area has the ground shifting up and it'll crush you if you hang around. There's no safe space. So book it to the end, use the moles as platforms so you don't land in the chompers, unless you have the red and blue blocks, and the goal is just ahead. There's also a hidden exit at the beginning of this area. When the ground raises up, hop up here and across this way to the key. Next up is the ghost house. Grab the flower in the first block, and avoid the green orbs on your way to the door. So now you're in the center of a big ass room. You can go either left or right, but you'll need to hit the P-switch to activate the blocks first. Grab the dragon coin first, and once you hit the switch, book it as fast as you can to the right. Once the time runs out, you'll drop into the pit. Grab the dragon coin, skip the coin block, and enter either the third or fourth door. Either one works, and you're at the goal. Easy peasy. But, there are other goodies throughout the stage you can get, namely a 1-up mushroom if you skip the exit door, and the door beside it will take you to here where the P-switch will open up access to the dragon coin here. You'll get another dragon coin here, some coins in this block, and the door here will take you back to the big room. 
You'll also appear in this room if you enter the second door on the right, or the door to the far left if you head in that direction, which also has a dragon coin. Just watch out for the booze. There's also a hidden exit in this spot where if you bonk the block for the coins, your movements will guide the direction of the line. And since the hidden exit is up top and can only be accessed by this tiny space, you won't be able to get up here by flying. So you'll need to enter the room from this direction, grab the P-switch, bring it over, and then guide the coins up to give you the access, using the P-switch to turn the coins to blocks, making it a walkable platform. The trick, and I do mean trick, because it's tricky as fuck, is to time it so that you don't hit the switch too early, where you'll have minimal time to reach before the blocks turn back to coins, and not to hit it too late, where you can't see where the fucking blocks are going. Also, if you're not small, you're gonna have to give yourself at least a little run space so you can run and slide across. Whew. Also back here, keep in mind that if the time on the P-Switch runs out, the blocks will replace the coins and you won't have access to any door you haven't reached, which is another reason why time is of the essence. Also just for reference, the first door here takes you all the way back to the beginning of the stage. Now at the stage 3. Jump over or onto the paratroopers when all three of them are on the ground and grab the feather in the block here. These numbered platforms will slide forward, but the number represents how many seconds they last before dropping off screen, so keep your eye on that. Grab the dragon coin here, just watch the paratrooper. Let him drop down before you head toward it, take bees up to the 4 second platform, and then drop onto the lower one and then take a running jump as it drops to get to the next one, and get the dragon coin. Get the dragon coin here, and drop down here, and take the pipe down to a 1-up bonus area. You'll emerge from the pipe that's right after the one you took, and use the spring to get the checkpoint and the flower in this block. Hop onto the 4 second platform, and now you're on a long ass stretch of timed platforms and massive bullet builds. Hop onto the crooked platform to get the dragon coin. In this spot, make sure you get a boost jump when you land on this bullet bill to get to the next one. Grab the last dragon coin here and get onto the top platform so you can reach the one up here on your way to the goal. Next is stage 4. At the beginning, you've got a charge and chuck digging up rocks, which you don't want to make contact with. So weave your way between them, leap onto this platform that sinks into the lava upon your contact, so quickly get the hell off of it. Grab the mushroom in this block, hop across the sinking platforms, and head down this pipe. It'll send you backwards. You'll emerge where the digging chuck was, but you can get a feather in this block here. Just avoid the spike tops along the way. And if you don't want or need the feather, don't bother. Just smack this block for a vine to move on. You'll find Yoshi in this block, and then you're going to want to drop down this gap, but nudge yourself forward the whole way down so you can get on this platform. Hop across these platforms, getting a running start or using your cape to make the long jump, and then smack the checkpoint. Stop on this block to get the feather in this block, and then make a running jump to get across here, or use the paratrooper as a boost if you have to. Use this spring to get up here, and right after is a hidden exit which will require you to have Yoshi cause the key is inaccessible, unless Yoshi gulps it up and you can take it straight to the door, or you can just exit the normal way, as the goal is literally right after that. Next up is Larry's castle, but if you took the hidden exit, you'll gain access to the Star Road that takes you to Star World Stage 5, and you can skip Larry's castle and go straight to the front door of Bowser's castle. But in case you take the normal route, let's take a look at Larry's abode. The first half of it has this snaky block platform like earlier. Stay kinda in the middle so you can see its movements ahead of you while also not getting yourself into danger of falling behind and slipping off. Maneuver your way between the spiked chain balls and hop on these blocks as the snake goes straight up and you can catch up with it later. Or actually get on the thing and get a dragon coin. Get on here and catch back up with the snake as it passes by underneath, and it'll swing back around so you can get the dragon coin and mushroom in this block. You'll see the area you'll want to access, but the platform takes a weird turn back downward. 
don't fret just continue riding it once again staying in the middle so you can follow its movements and it'll take you back up to the top again grab the dragon coin and you can access the next room through this door but you can also do it by dropping down hugging the edge so you can pass across without dropping into the pit and hitting the checkpoint before entering the door either way you'll end up over here but it's always nicer to have the checkpoint to fall back on plus the last two dragon coins are down here in the next area you've got two walls in a row of blocks You'll want to lure the Magic Koopa to fire his magic shit and break away the blocks. Try to get him to aim in two conjoining blocks back to back to squeeze through. All the while watching Dry Bones who hangs around. And the second one has a lava pit with a Podobu jumping out of it. Making this even more problematic. What makes it easier is if you have the cape. Then you can just swipe and make these spinning shits flip around and you can just slip through. Grab the mushroom in this block in between the two walls and watch the pencil spikes and right after is the door that leads to the battle with Larry. It's very much like the fight with Iggy. It's on a seesaw on top of lava where you'll need to nudge him off the edge. Although this time there are three Podobos that pop out of the lava to make it a little more difficult. Once again, you just need to nudge him off the edge. So smash him and stay committed to one side. Just watch out for the damn Podobos. Once you take him out, you're done with this castle, another Yoshi friend is rescued, and another castle is brutally destroyed, this time with Mario doing his best Ray Guy impression and punts the fucking thing off screen. So now you're at the front door of Bowser's castle, but before we get into that, first let's take a look at the path that you opened up if you decided to take the hidden exit at the end of stage 2, the fortress. It starts out with three of those spiked pillar things crashing down. Run past them when they raise up, and grab the feather in the green block in between the next set of pillars, and slip between the spikes when you drop down here. Watch the discolored spikes dropping from the ceiling while you deal with the dry bones. Then you've got more of these spiked pillars, but they're bookended by spikes in the floor, so you have to jump twice to get by each. And then on the third one, it's three of these things at once, so jump quickly as soon as they raise up. Then watch the Podobus popping out of the lava and grab the mushroom in the yellow block here. Down the home stretch, there's more spiked pillars, but they raise and drop fast, so jump as soon as it raises and move quickly. But make sure that it times out when the Podobu isn't also in the way. It's a double threat. On top of that, make sure you stop dead in your tracks or you'll slide into the next one. The door is just ahead and you've got another battle with Resna. Take them out using the same method as earlier, and this will take you straight to the back door of Bowser's castle. But if you took the front door, you'll get a different route. First you have to get through two rooms, and you have four options for each room. So there are eight total rooms, but you only have to go through two of them. So the first four are labeled. Door number one takes you to an auto scroller with these massive protrusions that come crashing down. You want to wait for them to raise back up before advancing, but you've also got Podobus. Not to mention the damn auto scroll is going to give you less time and space to work with. Also, if you didn't get all the colored switches, it's going to be even harder. I don't recommend this door, even if you do have the blocks unlocked. A random Podobu can fuck your shit up. The pipe on the other side takes you to the next room of doors, but first let's look at the other three options. Door number two brings you to a fence to climb where you just have to avoid the fireballs because all the troopers are on the other side, and you can easily punch them out if you feel like it, and the pipe to the next room is there before you know it. Door number three is a weird room with a bunch of curtains draped over that you can pass through. The ones that have larger diamonds that you can see through, those are ones where the floor at the bottom of them is missing and you can pass through. Head up these first two right off the bat, then up here, down the next two, and then down here for the exit. Just watch out for these Koopa toys along the way. They'll be hidden behind the curtains too, so don't rush through and smash or jump over them. Door number four has a bunch of sparks and some moving platforms. Wait for this platform to come to you and hop on it as long as the spark isn't on his way towards you. Then just watch the sparks, especially when there are several patrolling the same platform and the door will take you to the next area. 
between these four, I'd say two is the easiest, followed by three, four, and one being the most difficult. But pick your own poison. So now there are another four doors. Same deal. Door number five has a bunch of spiked spikes with lumps in between. All you have to do is run across. But you have to time your entry just right, because there's really not a wide margin for error here. You're going to want to make a break for it right as the spike raises up, and the door to the next area is right after. Door number 6 takes you to an underwater area where you have to swim upwards. You've got dry bones that throw bones your way, which sucks because it's in such a tight space. You have very little room to maneuver between his attack and the spiked walls that close in. Not to mention squeezing between the spikes and the swinging spiked balls. But the good news is that there is a feather in this block. The pipe at the end takes you to the next area. Door number 7 is an open room filled with Bowser statues that spit fire. Advance after they spit the fire, but watch out for these gold ones. They'll also jump back and forth. Also be leery of the Pidobus that launch from the lava and enter the door at the end to move on. Door number 8 is a long line of charging chucks that do more jumping than charging. They wouldn't be such a nuisance if there weren't so friggin many of them. But if you bounce off this one, you can smack the block here for a feather, which will make it easier to guide yourself through these bastards, and gives you the additional hit point you'll want as you hit the home stretch. No matter which door you take, the next area is the same spot you'll appear in if you took the back door entrance, making this castle much shorter. This room is dark as shit, so bump the block here for a disco ball that lights up part of the room. Who knew that Bowser liked to dance? And holy shit, it's ninjis! They look and behave just like the ninjis in Mario 2, jumping straight into the air. And while it feels like you want to land on them and pick them up, you'll soon remember, oh yeah, a different game. Stomp them out, along with the Koopa toy, and the door ahead leads you to Bowser's room. He'll appear in this weird-ass floating contraption, swinging back and forth. Just be sure not to jump here. He'll stop and drop two Koopa toys before going back to swinging again. Stomp one of them, pick it up, and toss it. It'll move in an arc pattern, and you'll want to smack Bowser, preferably when he stops. It's easier to aim this way. Be patient here. Don't try to go after the toys when Bowser is anywhere near the center or you'll get smacked. Keep in mind though that the toys will reactivate after a short time, so don't hang on to them for too long. Another thing that sucks is that whatever you had in your inventory is gone, but that can be remedied in a little bit. After two hits, he'll fly off screen and send some fireballs to the floor. Make sure you get between them, and when he returns, the princess manages to toss you a mushroom. If you're already Super Mario, you'll get the mushroom added to your inventory. Now he'll drop a massive bowling ball at you twice before going back to tossing the Koopa toys. The one difference here is his flying pattern. He'll be up higher more consistently this time. After a few hits, he'll toss more fireballs and you'll get another mushroom from the princess. Now he's pissed. He's just bouncing around now trying to crush your ass. You'd think at this point he realizes the toys are working as a detriment to him, but he still stops to toss them. Let him jump over you, grab a toy, and let him have it. A couple shots later, he's finally done for, you'll have rescued the princess, you get a fireworks show, and a parade as the credits roll. Then, holy shit, the Yoshi friends all hatch from their eggs, so there really was a payoff for them all being trapped this whole time. Finally, you'll get a rundown of all the enemies, and yeah, I didn't refer to all of them by their proper names throughout the video, I don't give a shit. So that's the end of the game proper, but I've still yet to talk much about the Star World. Now I mentioned earlier how you get to each of these stages, but if you want to use this area as a means of skipping worlds and such, you need to connect their paths. To do that, you have to find the hidden exits in each of the Star World stages. Beating them the regular way does nothing aside from giving you some extra coins and shit, maybe. So the first Star World stage gives you a mushroom right away, which you'll need to break through all these blocks underneath. Lean toward the right to get the dragon coin in here, then at the break, you have the option to head toward the left for another one, and a feather below that. But if you decide to go right instead, 
you'll find the key and the hidden exit that connects you to Star World Stage 2. If you stay the course, at the next break there's another dragon coin toward the left and a one-up shroom on the right. After that, there'll be a star man in this opening to give you invincibility just in time to meet the first enemies in the stage, a bunch of Koopa Troopers. There'll be two more dragon coins on the left and then another star man as you dig down and you'll find a baby red Yoshi you can pick up and feed by carrying it to nearby enemies which will cause him to grow after eating a few and then bam, you've got a full grown red Yoshi. Right below that is the pipe to the goal. There's not a lot to say about Star World Stage 2. It's a wide open underwater stage with a shitload of Rip Van Fish and Cheep Cheeps. So grab the Starman that drops at the beginning and swim as fast as you can. When you run out of invincibility, swim over the school of Cheep Cheeps and then swim low but quickly to get underneath the Rip Van Fish here on your way to the pipe leading to the exit of the stage. But you don't want to take that regular exit. Instead, swim under here for the key to the hidden exit that takes you to Star World Stage 3. There's also a baby blue Yoshi right at the beginning if you want to feed it. Star World Stage 3 is a very short one. It's just a lack of two tossing spinies with a bunch of blocks you can use to kill them, plus a P-switch that causes the lack of two to toss coins instead of spinies temporarily, and baby orange Yoshi you can feed. But again, you don't want the regular exit, you want the hidden one. To get it, knock out the lack of two with one of the blocks, hop in this cloud, and fly up here for a key and this block that'll unlock the hidden exit, which leads you to Star World Stage 4. Grab the baby red Yoshi right away and feed him the Koopa Troopers you'll come across. Hop along the rotating platforms, there are about a half dozen of these things in the stage. Grab the feather in this block, and when you get to this lineup of paratroopers, wait until they're up high enough for you to be able to pass under them. Or kick the turtle shell at them if you don't have Yoshi anymore to gobble them up. Then you'll get on these rock platforms. Grab the loose shell over here to kick at the trooper hanging out over here. And then a few more of these rotating platforms later, and you're at the goal. But to get the hidden exit, when you land on the rock platforms, grab the shell and bring it down here. You'll need the green and red blocks to do this, and crack this block with the shell, or swipe it with the cape if you have it. You'll get the key to the hidden exit right after, which leads you to the final Star World stage, number 5. First, you've got a bunch of these dropping platforms, so get off of them quickly, but be sure to avoid the paratroopers that fly around the area. When you get here, this block will send a line of coins out that you'll need to hit the P-switch to turn into blocks so you can get across. Now keep in mind this is temporary, so be ready to get off of this thing, namely once you see these four yellow blocks that you can slip down. But there are more dropping platforms, so be ready to move. Grab the yellow Yoshi here, eat the spinies and piranha plants, hop across another string of dropping platforms, and then use the shells of these troopers to kill the spinies in this tight area on your way to the goal. But you don't want this goal, you want the hidden exit. To get there, first off you'll need the cape. Now when you use the P-switch to turn the coins to blocks, instead of following the linear path, instead wait a little bit to give it some length, then hit the switch, move along the path, and then get a running start and fly up here. Slide under these rocks and grab the key for the hidden exit. Hitting up this particular hidden exit will connect you to a star road that takes you to a whole other bonus world called the Special Zone, which I mentioned earlier are the zany ass just for the hell of its stages. The funny thing about these stages are the titles. They're named after 80s slang, like the first one is gnarly. Use the springs to get up here, ride this rope to get to a 1-up in this box, and smack this block to get a vine to climb. Get the dragon coin here, keep climbing, and there'll be another one near this paratrooper. Use the music note boxes to bounce up this way, smack the box for a feather, and then drop down here, using the feather to glide down if you have the cape so you can direct yourself to the three dragon coins on the way down. Enter the pipe, hit one of the two blue P switches, and grab the other one. The switch populates all these question blocks, so if you feel like you're running out of time as you try to take out this hammer brother from underneath, hit the other switch to buy yourself some more time, and the exit is right after. Next stage is Tubular. 
The first chunk of the stage has some charging chucks and piranha plants. Jump over this shit, grab the dragon coin, then smack the P-switch, and slip down here to spring up for a pea balloon. Just make sure you immediately spring up to grab it, cause you need it to get by this long ass pit. Flow up to get over the balls these chucks chuck at you, grab as many coins as you can, including the dragon coins, but you've gotta focus on moving forward cause you have limited floating time. But this block here has another balloon, so grab it, weave between the paratroopers, and wait just a bit for these flowers to drop the lava balls before passing through and collecting the dragon coin. You'll otherwise put yourself in a tough spot. After passing this pipe, hit the block where this charging chuck resides for one more balloon, grab the last two dragon coins that hover around the lava flowers, and the goal is right after. Next level is called Way Cool, and this is where it really starts to become a pain in the ass. Hop on the platform that carries you across the wire, and you're pretty much gonna spend half the level on these things while avoiding the fuzzies. Smack the first switch to send you down here, duck down and grab the dragon coin, just make sure to jump over the saw. Hit the second one, and then as this pair of fuzzies spin around, you're going to have to perform a well-timed jump from the back edge of the platform to get over them. There's a feather in this block right after, just make sure to quickly get it and get back onto the platform. Ignore the next two switches, do another crazy jump to get past these guys, grab the dragon coin, hit the next switch, and then jump up here to get the dragon coin and now you're done with this platform shit. Soon after, you're riding the ropes across these pulleys. Carefully maneuver yourself between the fuzzies, grab the dragon coin, and after another rope ride with a bunch of fuzzies, you've hit the goal. The next stage is awesome, and I mean that's the name of it, the level itself is not quite so much. Early on, you've got these little valleys with purple dinosaurs and a Koopa Troopa at the top ready to kick its shell at you, so avoid that shit. Grab the dragon coin, get the flower out of this block, and there'll be another dragon coin right after. And keep in mind, the terrain all throughout is icy as shit, so you'll be sliding around. Hit the P-switch, move quickly, watch out for the bouncing paratroopers, and jump onto these blocks to get the Starman in this block before the switch runs out and these blocks turn back to coins. Grab the flower and the dragon coin, and take advantage of the invincibility time to run through and not have to worry about dodging the cheap cheeps and massive bullet bills for a little while. Grab the dragon coin, and be careful on these small blocks, they're also icy, so you want to slow down a bit at the pit jumps. Jump up high to propel yourself off the bullet bills once your invincibility runs out, and the same with this red paratrooper on your way to the goal. Next level is called Groovy. Use the shell of the Koopa Troopa right off the bat to break this block for Yoshi, which makes it easier to deal with all the cacti in the stage, so eat up. Grab a power up from the slot machine block, eat more cacti, and grab the dragon coin here. Just watch out for the lava balls from above. Same with the pair of these fucks right after. Having Yoshi makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, wait for the opening and pass through. Grab the dragon coin right after this pipe, and there's a shit ton of cacti right after. Yoshi comes in handy here. Otherwise, back up and pass over them when they drop. Bounce off the charge and chuck to get this dragon coin, and then you've got another one right above the lava flowers right before the goal. Now we're on to the Mondo stage, and there's a Mondo current pushing you back in this one. Not only that, you've got cheap cheeps and a fucking hammer brother getting all up in your shit right away. Bump this asshole from underneath. Now the tide gets low, and get used to it changing throughout the stage. There's a feather in this block, and another hammer brother to bonk before you get a dragon coin, and the tide turns again. There's a Yoshi egg in this block in case you lost him, and another dragon coin right after. Go down this pipe for a nice little stretch of coins, and after popping back up, grab the flower in this block, the dragon coin at the bottom, and then one more dragon coin below the hammer brother. Make sure you take him out before worrying about anything else, and the pipe right after leads you to the goal. Next stage is Outrageous. Early on, you've got some caterpillars and bouncing flames. Avoid that shit. Grab the dragon coin, and grab the flower in this block. Watch out for the bullet bills and these cannons. Grab the dragon coin here, and stay low as you wait for the bullet bills to clear before moving on to the next dragon coin. 
We get this pipe, wait for the bullet bills to pop out of the cannons, and use one to propel yourself over it. Take out the Hammer Brother from underneath, and be ready for some cheap cheeps and Galoombas to emerge from these blocks, and get the Dragon Coin right after. Get the Yoshi Egg in this block, and slip down here for a flower in this one. At the home stretch is one more Dragon Coin right where the Hammer Brother and all these bullet bills pop out of. Take him out, and the goal is right after. Last on the list is Funky. Right away you've got the sumo bricks above. Get out of their way, grab the dragon coin, and use the troopers to bounce up here and smash the block for a Yoshi egg. Use one of the trooper shells to wipe out the sumo prick, grab the flower in this block, and use another trooper shell to take out the next sumo bro. Break through the blocks in the middle here, and remember you have to be Super Mario for this, so don't take a hit over here. Watch out for the sumo prick above you. Grab the Dragon Coin, and then there's another one after a pair of Charging Chucks. Use this Koopa Shell to clear this Chuck out of the way, and then there's another one right here in front of another Chuck. There's a Feather in this block, and a 1-Up in this Flying Box that you'll need to smack with one of the blocks down here. At the home stretch, you've got a trio of Chucks chucking balls. Wait for an opening, and leap up for the last Dragon Coin, and a litany of coins spelling out you are a super player is laid out for you to collect right before the goal. And now you're done with the special zone, and you're sent back to Yoshi's Island in the middle of an acid trip because all the colors are fucked up and various enemies and objects have been swapped out, giving you an easter egg of sorts for replay value. And that's it for Super Mario World. Of course, the Mario series didn't stop here. There would be a sequel, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, where you actually get to play as Yoshi. But this will be for a later date. So that wraps up this game, and that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.